God said, let there be light. <laughs> So that's when they, the community came in here. Does anyone here play violin? Any violinists here? Anywhere? <coughs> okay. I'll be playing a violin, which I call a period instrument, because it was made in this time period. If you look at it carefully, you can see it's missing something that modern violins have. Can anyone notice? The chin rest, right, the chin rest. Um, you know why violins didn't have chin rests in the 1800s? By the way, this one was made in 1850. You know why they didn't have chin rests? You may not believe this. Back then, people didn't have chins yet. <laughs> you believe me? No. <laughs> it's just a silly joke. They just didn't think of it. Chin rest was added to the violin about 1900. And there's also no fine tuners. And the strings are not made out of steel. Steel strings were developed in 1920. So that's beyond our period. And these strings are made out of sheep intestines. Sheep guts. That's what these are. I get these made from a, a gentleman in Minnesota, handmade from sheep intestines. It wouldn't make sense to go to all the trouble of uh, wearing these clothes and everything and just play on modern steel strings. So playing the steel strings are, would be much louder. These are quieter and they're harder to play on and harder to tune. So just give me a minute just to make sure it's in tune. Oh, it stayed in tune this time. Okay. Here's a piece that was very popular in the 19th century called Harvest Home. Harvest Home was the name of a holiday in England in the 1600s. It was the biggest feast day of the year and was held on a Thursday in November. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Like Thanksgiving. Did you ever wonder why Thanksgiving is always on a Thursday? In the Church of England in the 1600s, Thursday was the second most important church day or holy day of the week after Sunday. Okay, this is called Harvest Home. No words to it, it's just a very lively tune. <laughs> Thank you. 
And 35 years ago, I was playing that tune in the Noon Inn. Did you guys see the Noon Inn? Mm-hmm. Where they have a bar room? Mm-hmm. Okay, I was in the bar room, sitting in the uh, side of the bar room. And in the middle of that piece it's playing, the two double doors opened, and a bear <laughs> walked into the bar and walked up to the bartender and said, (laughs) I'll have a beer and a whiskey. So the bartender said, why the big paws? The bear said, I don't know, I was just born with them. (laughs) That's a true story. (laughs) Okay, that was a a horn We're going to play a piece now called Merrily the Quaker or merrily kissed the Quaker's wife. Here's an Irish tune from the 1600s. It's an air or a march, and it's called the Rose Tree. It's got a really, really gracious sound to it. Listen to it. This is the original melody. I won't play the whole thing. In 1859, an American composer, a New Yorker by the name of Daniel Emmett, took that tune, he changed the key, he added double stops or double strings, added syncopation to it, and it became the most, uh, it became the, the most no recognizable, the most recognizable of all American fiddle tunes, and you will recognize it right away. So here is the 1859 version of that.
inside of the house. Firing demos. Those who want to fire. Right. Handle your arms. Rest your firearms. Hold your firearms. Again, that's why everyone fired in volleys, because it doesn't matter necessarily about the quality, it matters more about the quantity. Make ready, present, fire! We have another misfire, it's very difficult when you have... Try again. That right there, the flash from the pen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. The weather also has an effect on these. Anything, anytime it gets damp, anytime it gets humid. And it's very difficult to load and fire in the dark. That's why they didn't fight at night. There you go, now you see. It's a much better weapon for the night. It's called a bayonet. Used to great extent by the British troops in North America in several night raids on unsuspecting Patriot camps. The closest one actually being Tepan in the Hudson Valley with the Tepan Bridge goes into. Ready, Corporal? Ready. Right, ready? Present. Fire! Oh. Oh. It happens when you get older. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Present. <laughs> fire! I want to keep watching. Third time's the charm. <laughs> Notoriously unreliable weapons, actually. They were quite reliable when used correctly. <clears throat> Make ready, present, fire! Thank you! Good volley! Wow, that's good. Do it one more time. Three cheers for a good volley! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Ball, that would end in a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> but we are firing real black powder, and that is indeed a real gun. When the reenactors are always asked, is that a real thing? Yes, it is. We're firing everything except the musket balls out of these. It's real black powder. It's not the, the, uh, the fireworks stuff that you get for, uh, this day and age in uh, 2018. This is the real stuff. That's why it has that stink of rotten eggs. <laughs> Make ready. Present. Fire! Perfect ball. Good boy! Fire locks! It's much lower. See how that works? So the longer they are, the lower they sound and the less strident it is, and your parents won't mind you practicing so much if you practice on the big ones. What does that mean? 
because so mine has it going straight through. I have a feeling that we have different uh, different uh, way of doing this. Your, your tune is different from ours. No, I think I think you are. Do, do I do that again or do I go on? Um, no, I think you go into the... I'll go on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We went in to get some cider. Oh. We're not working. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, we it's not working. Trying to figure it out. It's not working. There'd be 200 broom makers on a factory floor, and this was at a time when it was typically women. Um, and there'd be 200 people on a floor producing brooms. In an eight hour day, 200 people can produce 5,600 brooms. Wow. Okay? Give or take. If you want to include lunch in there, then 4,800 brooms. Whatever. Wow. Still, I mean. <clears throat> People don't often think that in the 1800s that there was a lot of industry, um, but there was. This is when a lot of stuff was changing. I'm sure you guys all remember in your textbooks, Industrial Revolution. Yeah, there have been several of them, but there was one in the 1800s. <laughs> so this is my smallest stock right here. So what I'm going to do is we'll go around this room one more time, and then we're going to have to finish it off. i got that little light for the scene, Tim. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, uh, now I can see it, brother. It's all right. Smile. Now, Chris, I get royalties this time, right? <laughs> You'll get credit. Uh, you'll get, you'll get uh, it's all good. It's all good. Video. All right, so right now what I'm doing is I'm going to go around this once, locking down the stalks into their respective places. Now what I'm going to do is put on this little loop. The loop's going to create a tight invisible knot. Invisible meaning that you won't be able to see it. Uh, it's still going to be there, but it's going to hold the broom together properly. <coughs> so we anchored it down to the back dowel. We're now going to anchor it here. Tension and energy throughout, and that's what's holding it together. So I'm just going to go around this twice. And now what I'm going to do is cut this down. Send it through the end of the loop. So right now what's holding the whole broom together is my left hand. Okay? So now I'm gonna pull this out. And now the broom's holding itself together. From here I'm gonna cut down the stalks to a uniform length. Gonna cut about a quarter 
three eighths of an inch away from the uh, bottom of the twine there. Okay, from here, <coughs> what I'm going to do is put in a little tack. By the way, that's an imperative step of broom making is putting the tack in your mouth. <laughs> It's like a third hand, really. All right. Just going to get that tack in there. This is going to help to hold that um, that twine in there. All right. So now the broom's completely secure the way that it is. What I'm going to do now is release it from the machine. This one's kind of annoying because these are bigger, um, right? So I'm just going to hit this real quick. So if you want to just move that way, just in case, OK? It's a no paperwork kind of night, my friend. All right. So I'm just going to release this. There we go. And again, a lot of times people think that you are making the broom and then shoving the handle onto it, when in reality, you build it all off of the handle. OK. Makes a lot more sense that way. But if you just think about it in your head, you're going to think it's the other way. Um, but it made life a lot easier for farmers on Long Island and everywhere. You gotta cut about a foot or so away from the bottom of the X pattern. Just cut just like this. There you go. Alright, now I'm just gonna get some of that dust and dirt out. You see it all flying out there. Even though brooms are made to sweep up floors, they are naturally dirty on their own because it is a natural material. And you see some of those bristles coming out, like if you ever get a haircut and go like that and then some hair comes out. It's in shock, pretty much. All right, this will also get a little ribbon put around it because it is Yuletide broom, just like the one that Jay held up before. So right now I'm just gonna come over this way and I am going to do the test of a good broom. <coughs> just like this, which is to see if it can stand on its head like so, okay? There you go. All right, hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, my name's Tim. We do also sell these here. Um, if you guys did not have a time, a good time. My name is Aaron. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked it. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in purchasing, just talk to me or Jay and we'll help you out. Let me uh, guess, 23 bucks? Actually, it's $20. Yeah, no, it's $20. How much would it, would, it, would it have cost? This would have went for, if granted, this is a little bit more modern because it does have decoration to it. But the style that had the woven design would have been about 20 cents. Um, now, men in the 1840s are making 48 cents a day. We're in the middle of an economic depression, so that is more than half of your salary, or about half of your salary, um, for a broom. <laughs> so think about what you make in a day, and divide it by two, and that's how much a broom should cost you. Wow! Wow! All right. <laughs> wow! Oh, we know who the big spender is. <laughs> All right, guys. So I hope that you had a good time. If you have any comments, questions, or complaints, feel free to let me know. Complaints, the door is that way. Uh, but, uh, no, for real, though, if you have anything, just let me know. But otherwise, have a great night, guys. Lots more to see and do. Make sure you get some hot cider over there. Oh, wow. What are you talking about? Wow. <laughs> 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 what is that? I can't even get out of this. Oh, really? Dashing through the snow, we don't want more soap and say. All the things we go, laughing all the way. Bells and bobtail ring, making spirits bright. Oh, let's start to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in one more soap and say. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in one more soap and say. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride. And soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank. Misfortune seemed his lot. We got into a drifted bank and where we got upset. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in one horse open say. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in one horse open say. A day or two ago, a story I must tell. I went out on the snow and on my back I fell. A gent was riding by in a one-horse open sleigh. He left us there as rolling lion quickly drove away. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. 
Oh, what joy it is to ride in a white horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in a white horse open sleigh. Now the ground is white, go rich while you're young. Take the girls tonight and sing the same song. Just get a bobtail bay, 240 has its speed. They turn to an open sleigh, crack, you'll take the lead. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in a one more soap and say. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what joy it is to ride in a one more soap and Wow. There's a lot of words I didn't know. I kind of yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You didn't know that either. <laughs> More words than you wanted to know. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> the four sand and bear I be decked with bays and rosemary. And I pray you, my masters, be thereby, God as he sing for me the old. La Buddha, pray de ferro, pray dance thou as domino. The board's head, as I understand, is the rarest dish in all the land. Which thus be decked with a gay garland, let us servire cantico. Caput a pre de ferro, pre dens loud as domino. Our steward hath provided this in honor of the Queen of Bliss. Which on this day shall be served is in raging and siatrio. Caput a pre de ferro, pre dens loud as domino. Caput a pre de ferro, pre dens loud as domino.